Two Russian missiles struck a city in eastern Ukraine last night, and they destroyed apartments and damaged a hotel popular with international journalists covering the ongoing war. According to Ukrainian officials, at least seven people were killed in the strike, and 81 others were injured. CBS News foreign correspondent Ramin Asensio is in Ukraine with the latest. Ramin, good morning. Nearly half of those wounded are Ukrainian fire and rescue workers. Emergency services rushed to the site of that first explosion, not knowing that a second missile was about to hit. Stunned and staring at this apartment, its walls crumbling right after Russia's strike, residents of the town of Pokrovsk now turned rescuers, scrambled to help people sprawled on the ground. The flames filled my eyes, said this bruised woman. I fell on the floor, there's shrapnel in my neck. The window fell on me, said her neighbor. I've got cuts on my back, knee and legs. Part of the hotel Druzhba, meaning friendship, was also smashed, used by many journalists covering this war, including our own CBS News colleagues just in June, who sheltered in the hotel basement as a missile exploded outside. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky said Russia is trying to leave only broken and scorched stones, adding we have to stop Russian terror. And new this morning, Ukraine counterintelligence revealed the arrest of three more Ukrainian women, also from the district of Pokrovsk, alleged to be part of a Russian agent network. Transmitting movements of combat aircraft and armored vehicles. That claim just one day after the spy agency said another Ukrainian woman had gathered intel on Zelensky's July schedule to Mykolaiv, a city near the southeast front line, for a possible assassination attempt and, quote, massive airstrike on the region. And today's new claim, at least geographically, makes sense. This is in the eastern Donetsk region, which borders Russia. The more east you go, the more of a historical lean toward Moscow you get. Ukraine Security Services says those women were a sleeper cell waiting to be woken up since before the war started. Henry, David. Maybe thank you. For more on this, we are joined by James Waterhouse with our partners at the BBC. James, talk to us about what we're learning about these Russian undercover networks in Ukraine. What threat do they pose? What are they after? Well, I think it's fair to call them a, a constant threat, really. Even before the full-scale invasion, Russian agents had long infiltrated Ukraine. The difference back in February of last year was that the intelligence they provided was questionable at best. It was thought in some portions of the Russian military that they would just march in, single file in those armoured columns and be welcomed, was the claim in some of those intelligence reports. But Ukraine's intelligence service or frequently accuses its citizens of being informants, where they report to Russian handlers. We've heard of those three arrests in the eastern Pokrovsk region. The timing is, 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 is we're not sure if it's connected to the, the rocket strikes we've seen overnight, but also we have the extraordinary allegations facing a woman in the southern Mykolaiv region where it's alleged she helped uh, Russian officials plan an airstrike for an official visit by President Zelensky. She's mm. accused of taking pictures of key military sites while traveling around. So it's a constant threat, um, but you wonder how much they are connected to the military movements of Russia. Uh, I want to ask you about this uh, strike on uh, Pokrovsk. I'm not sure if I said it right. It's described as a double tap strike. That's when a location is targeted. Then they wait about 15, 20 minutes and then target it again when first responders have descended on the location. When I heard about this, this I thought this is something that you hear terrorist organizations doing. What's the strategy behind Russia engaging in something like this? It's to inflict uh, as big a human uh, cost as possible, to be frank with you. We've seen it before where I remember being in a missile strike in Zaporizhia last year where a human convoy was hit. The ballistic missile landed, emergency crews moved in, tried to help with who they can. Journalists like us moved in, and people lose their lives when a rocket hits the exact same area. It's a very deliberate act. And what we're hearing from Pokrovsk is that a missile hit, and then 40 minutes later, so did another. And, and this hotel uh, and, the, and this restaurant are two really major locations in this city. There aren't many places to stay or eat when you're in a military towns such as Pokrovsk. Uh, and so it feels deliberate. Yes, there were plenty of Ukrainian soldiers there. It's, it's, it's no doubt why the Russians would have targeted this area. But they are nevertheless targeting a residential area, a civilian 
town and here we are again with the now sadly familiar sight of rescue teams trying to sift through rubble and despite all of this we've spoken to thousands of people who are moving back to areas like this to return home despite the very real and constant threat. That is absolutely stunning, James. Uh, James Waterhouse, thank you very much.